Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, so my name's Jesse Sadler. I am um, a historian. Um, I teach at Loyola Marymount University. Um, and so uh, even though I am talking about vectors today, uh, what I normally do, uh, and just quickly, the slides are online, and I'll have a link at the end. But um, what I normally do is I study history. I am a historian. I'm interested in uh, merchant networks and merchant families in uh, the 16th and 17th century. And uh, I'm particularly interested in inheritance uh, and what inheritance shows about how people interacted with each other and how uh, families interacted with each other. And so that leads me to doing math. Specifically in terms of doing math with non-decimal currencies. So these are currencies like here, this is Flemish pounds, but basically currencies that are in pounds, shillings, and pence. And this is a problem. Uh, because we don't learn how to do non-decimal uh, arithmetic anymore, and computers are obviously based on uh, decimal arithmetic. And so you can't just plug these numbers into a computer and do an analysis on them. It doesn't really work that way, unfortunately. So what exactly is the problem space? The problem space is that you, with non-decimal currencies, you have to do something called compound unit arithmetic, right? So you have to add up the separate columns and then divide by the base of that column um, and then you can get your answer. So in other words, we have a number of different problems here. We have three separate units that make up one value. Those units do not have decimal bases so therefore, we need to use this compound unit arithmetic. And finally, to make things even worse, the units can differ. So the normal sort of most used units in historical currencies is to have 20 shillings in a pound and 12 pence in a shilling, but they could change, right? So you guys didn't know you were getting so much history uh, today, JJ in the keynote already talked about history of corporations. This is what he's talking about. I'll have some, some stuff about corp well, some ideas about corporations. Um, so, uh, so there, there's a problem, and you can't just plug this in. Um, however, uh, programming languages like R are very flexible, and so you can um, uh, use them to do this essentially compound arithmetic um, yourself. So what we want to do in a situation like this is we want to take these totals, which are just added up, right, and then normalize them, do the compound um, unit arithmetic in order to get um, uh, uh, the answer that we want. And so you can make a, what, what I'm calling here, a normalized function, which basically takes a vector of length three, the amount of units that we have, and then normalizes them using uh, a remainder uh, division, essentially, and then brings them all together. Um, okay, so this is great. We have a normalized function, we're ready to go. Um, we've got something. We can even create an S3 class. And S3 classes, who here has built their own S3 class before? All right, a number of you, right? S3 classes are great because they're really easy to make, right? I just built an S3 class, right? The um, key here is the structure part, right? And so this is a class um, that has a value into it, x, and then it has, um, uh, I've called the class LSD, which is um, uh, the Latin terminology for pounds, shillings, and pence. And uh, then I've added a basis uh, um, attribute so that we can know what the basis of the shillings and pence units are. 
All right? And so I can just do this, and I can create something, and it doesn't have a nice printing um, method or anything right now, but I've created an S3 class. OK, so great. I've created an S3 class. Now I'm going to sit down. I'm going to figure out what am I going to do with this? What else do I need to do? Well, right now, I can only have one value at a time, so maybe I need to have multiple values, so I should use a list or something, and then I need to change the normalization method. Okay, no problem. All right, so what else do I need to do? Um, okay, at this point, it gets really confusing because you have to implement all these methods, and it's not really clear how exactly you're going to do them, and what methods you have to implement, and why you need to do them, and so on. And so basically, I went through this, and I implemented some methods, and some I didn't. Um, and then I talked to Hadley Wickham, and he said, no, what you should do is that you should use vectors. And so um, vectors is a package that gives you a path to implementing all of those different methods, to actually creating your own S3 class without having to know everything there is to know about um, the different S3 classes. So um, uh, the goals of the vectors package um, are fairly s s uh, simple in some ways, but um, uh, very deep. Uh, it's about type stability and size stability, and Hadley talked about this at the last RStudio conference. Um, but I am going to focus on this last um, aspect of um, building S3 classes. So what do you get by using this vectors package? Well, as I said before, you get a clear path. But you also get consistency with base R. It's just an S3 class, and so there's no reason why your users would need to know that it's based on vectors. And then finally, it is integrated and continuing to be integrated into the tidyverse. OK, so what I want to do in this talk, and for the rest of the talk, basically, is um, uh, talk about why you might want to create your own S3 class through this example of um, uh, non-decimal currencies, why you should use vectors, and to point you to some things of how you can do it. And I don't have enough time to go through and uh, do all of a tutorial on this and show all the different steps. And so what I've done is I've created a, um, a, a package that I'm calling deb vectors, which is a simplified version of the package where I've done more of this in DebKeeper. Um, uh, and uh, you see the URLs there. And what the deb vectors package is, is it provides a tutorial of a step-by-step -step way to get through this, and I will um, uh, go through some of these steps um, now. And so just as a aside, the um, uh, image that you see there is a trademark of an individual who would use that. So again, more history stuff. Um, OK, so there's basically six different steps to creating a um, S3 class with vectors. Again, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm going to concentrate on the first half, the first three. Um, and I won't go into the last three, but I will talk about them. Uh, you'll see the, it, how they are when they're implemented. And if you're creating a class that's based on double vectors, you only have to do four of these, two of these steps you get for free. And so just to give you an idea, so dev vectors is a package, and it's tested, and it has everything. But the way that the scripts are organized is to follow this. And then within the scripts, uh, they are, uh, there's a lot of different comments on how to do these things. So I definitely recommend that you go and look at this that's on GitHub, and you see the um, URL there. OK, so let's go through some of these choices that I made with um, DebKeeper slash DebVectors. And so just as a reminder, right, to go back to our problem space, we have to deal with these issues of compound unit arithmetic, of representing a single value with three different numbers. 
So um, in designing this, I thought about different things. So one, I didn't want to just decimalize everything. I wanted to maintain the structure of the numbers. Um, I wanted to keep track of the bases of the shillings and pence because they could differ. Um, and I wanted to make sure that if, they, if two uh, values had different bases that they couldn't be combined in any way. Um, but at the same time, I did want to create a decimalized class that I could use as a fallback. And this would have the same basic um, attributes of a bases attribute that you could uh, follow what the different bases of the pounds and shillings are. But in addition, it would have an attribute on the unit. So it would be a decimalized unit of the pounds unit or the shillings unit or the pence unit, right? And different units can come together because they can be the same currency, but there needs to be a way in which that's done. Um, and so I'm calling these uh, classes DEB LSD. DEB uh, is short for double entry bookkeeping, which is where you find uh, all these different uh, um, values, and then DEB decimal. So again, I'm not going to go into this, but this just gives you an idea of this. Are, these are the steps within the first um, uh, major step of creating the vector. And so it's uh, uh, broken down here. And I'll just give you um, this uh, slide, which is a simplified, simplified version of the creation of the class. It, this it doesn't have any checks or anything. But you can see here the different arguments that we have um, on uh, the left, uh, the different uh, vectors that can be put in for pounds, shillings, and pence, and then on the right, um, just the single one, and then the attributes of each class. Um, and then here we have the actual creation. And so um, with the DEB LSD, when we want to keep these tripartite structures, I'm going to use a record style vector. And so this is essentially a list that has equal um, vectors of equal length. And so um, uh, that gives us a basis from which we can have this different um, structure, this tripartite structure. Um, on the right, it's just essentially, um, uh, again, a double vector. Um, so here we have now, I'm skipping some steps, right? But this is what it looks like if we implement our class. And um, uh, so we can start here on the left. We have now a function where we can create a class. And so we have different things that we can add into the pounds values, the shillings values, the pence values. And here we're going to take our standard uh, bases of 12 and 20. And um, uh, on the right is an equivalent uh, vector that is uh, decimalized. And here we have uh, the printing method methods that I've chosen. So again, these are things that you can create. Um, so it has uh, here I've chosen to include the base attributes um, and the unit attribute, so it's very clear. And both work natively with Tibble. Um, uh, the record style vectors are not fully integrated, but um, they're getting there. So uh, the last thing I want to talk about here um, that I have time to talk about is uh, the issue of casting and coercion, which is really at the heart of what is happening um, as you are creating your vectors, your classes, and want them to interact with other different classes. So um, the workflow is fairly sim simple. Uh, you have a bo boilerplate that you're going to use on each time, and this is the same for casting and coercion, where you define the method for the class, and then you give a default. Then you do the methods within the class, and then the methods with any compatible, compatible classes that you decide to choose. Um, so what um, uh, coercion and casting do is they are kind of two sides of the same coin. Coercion looks for and uh, determines what the common type is 
um, with this function vec p type 2, while casting does the actual transformation. And so things like comparison between classes are made possible by implementing both of these things. So again, I don't have uh, a chance to go through all this, but um, coercion is really about design choices. There's not necessarily that much code that goes into something like this. And so in this instance with deb vectors, I decided to have a double goes to a deb decimal, which would then go to a deb LSD. So if you had these three types in a um, uh, 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 combined function, then you would get a deb LSD. Um, casting is a little bit more interesting because this is where we have the programmatic logic of the actual transformation. And um, one reason why I think that deb vectors is an interesting uh, example of this is because I, am, I, I have two different kinds of vectors, and so you have to think about how you can combine them in different ways. And so here, um, again, the code is not necessarily super easy to read, but this is taking a deb decimal and then converting it to this tripartite structure. And essentially, what I'm doing is taking simple if else statements, what um, is the unit, and then from that unit, placing it where it should be in a call to create a deb LSD um, uh, vector, and then finally normalizing it so that we get a normalized value so that we've done the compound unit arithmetic. Okay, so. Um, uh, how do we put it all together? So this is essentially the endpoint. Here I'm just showing that what you can get. So we can combine deb LSD, deb decimal, and uh, uh, double, and we get deb LSD. We can compare different types. So 3,255 um, pence is less than um, 15 pounds. And uh, again, if you go on, you can do arithmetic, including arithmetic with different types. So what I want to say is that you can create your own S3 vectors. Uh, you can extend the capabilities of R to fix your own, fit your own needs, and that vectors provides this clear developmental path that enables you to do this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jesse. That was fantastic. We have a couple of questions. If you still want to sneak one in, please do. Uh, there's a question about whether you can comment on your choice between, you mentioned explicitly S3 and vectors. Mm -hmm. Did you consider our six classes, and, and how did that factor in your, into your decision making? Um, so I looked at it a little bit, but mostly I um, was sort of interested in the simplicity of S3. And like I said, I, I basically wrote the entire package with S3 based on lists. And then um, I talked to Hadley, and then I had like a month of work to do. <laughs> So uh, the second question is, uh, once you had your, for your data in vectors format, what did you have to do additionally to make it compatible with Tidyverse? So, um, uh, like I said, the, especially if your um, vector is based on a double, then it pretty much works right out of the um, package. Um, right now, with uh, record style vectors, um, there are some things like mutate that don't quite work, but I know that our studio is working on that. But there you can just go back to base R um, things that work just fine. Um, and hopefully soon, um, that will also get figured out. And the final question, what was the process, what was your original data format? I mean, how do you go from paper record into <laughs> vectors? Yeah, so um, it, it's, it's fun thinking about um, the questions of big data because um, I have to create all of my own data. Um, and uh, it's also 
funny to think about it in terms of reproducible data. Oh, don't change the data. And it's like, well, wait, I created it. I can change it if I want to. Um, but basically, I take these numbers, I, I um, uh, take these documents, and I input them by hand, trying to figure out what the numbers are, and do it in a spreadsheet um, uh, um, uh, program, and then export it to CSV. And uh, there is a function in Dev Keeper, but not in Dev Vectors, but um, that will take that and create um, Deb LSD uh, uh, columns from those three different columns. Thank you very much. Thank you.